The open interpreter is a new way to use computers. You just give it an English prompt to be like, you know, set my system to dark mode or open up Chrome and go to this website. I'm going to give it a go. Find the top 10 largest files on my computer. The plan for finding the top 10 largest files. Use the shell command, begin at the top directory of the file system, find all files in the system, get their file size, sort these files, take the top 10 and the sorted list. Okay, run. Trap is not recognized as a command. It seems like the do is not recognized on your machine. I'm going to use a Python script to accomplish this task. This task will traverse your file system and record the sizes of your... Dude, this is really cool. I'm really liking this. Would you like to run this code? Yeah. Whoa, dude, it even highlights the lines as it's running it. What? That is insane. I've never seen that before. I want to do a web scraping one. Let's do that next. Scrape every video on Andy's TikTok and put it into a CSV file. Please note, this could take a while based on the number of videos in the account. The step-by-step -step approach is to install Selenium for web scraping and pandas for handling the CSV file. Yep, so now it's gonna run this script that's gonna go through go through all of Andy's videos. Oh shit, we got a capture. There we go, okay. Oh, what the hell? It's not letting me do the capture in time. No! <laughs> It's TikTok's anti-bot software. Ah! <laughs> Damn it, dude. Ah, it knows I'm a bot. Stop it. Oh, no. Well done, TikTok. An open interpreter install tutorial. Just go to anaconda.com and click download. So once Anaconda is installed, I run the installer. So the setup will come. Just click next. And now step two is to run Anaconda prompt. If you press start on Windows or if you're on Mac, I think you can use Spotlight and you want to open this Anaconda prompt. Uh, pip install open interpreter into Anaconda prompt and that should install open interpreter for you. Now that it's installed, we can just run interpreter. And looks like it's working. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. This is something that you might get stuck with, but you do need to set your API key. For this, you need an OpenAI account. So you need to log into OpenAI or sign up. Um, you do need to have a credit card authorized because it does cost money to run this API. And once you do that, you go into platform.openai.com slash account slash API keys, you create a new secret key, name it whatever, and then copy the secret key that's being created. Open interpreter will tell you the command you need to run to add the API key. And here's one thing guys, you might have to restart the whole prompt thing and set the API key a couple times for it to work. I don't know, it's just some bug. But yeah, after that interpreter will work just as normal. Agent of life has asked, can it list suspicious programs running in the background? Let's give it a go. List suspicious processes running in the background. So its plan is to determine the operating system based on the operating system, run the relevant commands to find the background processes and see if we can determine them as suspicious. Let's see. So first it tries to run navigator the platform and sees that we're running Windows. So now it's going to see how to run this command on Windows. Task list. And we get a list of every process that's running. So it seems to have forgotten that it's checking for suspicious processes, but we can just remind it again. Do you think any of these processes look suspicious? It doesn't have a opinion to be able to tell if something looks suspicious, but it gives some general tips for finding a suspicious program. So we could use an API to check, or can you check for network activity from each process? It says unfortunately it doesn't have the capability to monitor network activity, but we can use task manager and resource manager. What about with Python? Can you write a Python script to monitor network activity sure with psutil i thought so let's see if this works gives a warning about security it's going to install psutil now and now it's going to run this script to check for network activity seem to have made a syntax error it's going to fix that and yeah we have something that's constantly checking network activity for each pro oh no it just checked it for a little while for each process successfully printed the network activity for each process 
Can we write the output to a file? Now it's going to write it to a file under networkactivity.txt. Let's see if that is here. Yep. And we have networkactivity.txt, which has all the different processes and network requests they made. PreSonus hardware. I don't need that anymore. Okay, that's cool. So this is something I can uninstall. This is my old audio driver, but we don't use that anymore. So that's cool. Yeah, so it gives you some insight, OBS. I hope that helps. If anyone else has any cool ideas of what we can do with Open Interpreter, please leave them in the comments. I'll ask it to try and make a weather app with React. Create a React app called Weather App. All right, to create a template React app named Weather App, we can use Create React App provided by Node.js. Um, perfect. And then we'll use MPX to create the Weather App. First, it's going to check if we have Node installed, which we do. There we go. And now we're going to use Create React App. Let's do that. It's working. It's creating the React App. Is Open Interpreter using GPT-4? Yeah, by default it does use GPT-4, but you can like change the backend model to be a whole bunch of things. Like they got something like 40 plus models you can use. You can even use like locally hosted models with Open Interpreter. It's pretty cool. Okay, so they've created the template React app weather app. Navigate into the into the project folder and run yarn start. Can it do that? There we go. This is what our template React app it's probably just the very default React app, but we're going to get um, Open Interpreter to actually write some code soon. Awesome. So we successfully got Open Interpreter to create a React app. Here's one thing, though. Now that this console is running React, it actually doesn't let us interface with the Open Interpreter anymore, which is annoying. But we can just open a new window, I guess. I don't see any issue with that. Um, and then just run Open Interpreter in a new window. Actually, we'll navigate into the Weather App folder and run Interpreter in there. And now let's see if we can get inter Open Interpreter to actually edit the code. So I'll be like, you are in a fresh Create React App um, instance. Edit the necessary files to make um, component on the home page render that displays the weather forecast for the week. This is kind of complex. Let's see how it does it. To achieve this, we're going to be building a weather forecast component in the React application. We'll also be making use of Open Weather Maps API. Awesome. So it found its own API to use. Um, it said we need to create an API key. I'd be like, instead of using open weather map, can you use? And then, because we found a, a weather API that doesn't need an API key. So I'm going to provide it that and see what it says. Certainly, we can make a use of this API. And so Axios for calling that API, create the weather forecast, and then doing that. So it wants us to install Axios. Could we be like, Use fetch instead of Axios so we don't need to install anything. Here we go. It's going to create the React component for fetching the weather. Looks pretty good. Oh, it wants me to create the component? Bro, <laughs> these AIs are just as lazy as humans. Please create this component inside the SRC folder. Oh, damn. It needs to use Echo. I guess, yeah. How else would it do it? So the way that Open Interpreter interacts with your computer is through terminal commands, essentially. Shell, PowerShell, Bash. Um, and yeah, it tries to work with Echo, but Echo doesn't work on Windows. So, so it struggles with making large file. But while editing this, I realized that Open Interpreter also interacts with the computer through Python scripts and not just executing terminal commands. So we're going to try get it to write the React files using Python. You are in a fresh React app. Draft the necessary components to create a weather app showing a seven day forecast and then write the react files using a python script here's the plan first it'll draft the components um, an app container a weather card a loader a notification bar wow that's quite 
quite a lot. <clears throat> And then it'll draft app.js in pseudocode. And then it will translate the drafted pseudocode into actual React code. And then finally write the Python script to write the draft as files. I hope it doesn't run out of context because this is quite a lot of things to do. So first it's draft the app.js file. It's defining the state variables, defining the weather function. Um, I'm just going to say for it not to use an API and just hard code placeholder values. Don't to use an API. All right, that English wasn't great, but it understood what I meant. And now it's rewriting the pseudocode and it has the component structure. It's going to import those components. Now I'll translate the pseudocode into React code. After that, we'll write the Python script. Go ahead. So it's writing the Python script to write the React files. I guess that's what we want. So let's run it. It's written the file successfully, apparently, and says, great, the Python scripts written the create react files correctly let's have a look and see if those files were created weather app src oh no it's got app.js and src so i didn't tell it to write it in the right location unfortunately but we can try just um replace those files and yarn start let's see if the weather app it created actually looks like anything cool it didn't do any CSS, so no styling. But we can ask it to do styling later for sure. Let's just see if it even runs. Moment of truth. Wow, look, it got, we got a React app. Um, okay, now it's, it's ask, is there anything else we can help with? And I'll be like, yes, make a CSS file in SRC and update weather card .js to have the styling. It should be an elegant modern design. So it's writing the CSS. That looks good. So it's cool. It's doing this all in Python. It's actually really impressive. And now it's going to read. So it seems like it's looks like it. It's, the file is incomplete. It kind of just stopped writing here. So I'm just going to make sure that it finishes it off. I don't know if that was a token limit thing or it shouldn't be. I'm pretty sure it can run a lot more than that. Looks like it's having short term memory loss. OK, now it's doing better now. No, I got stuck again. I think it's a GPT-4 limit. And we'll try again. I'm trying to split it up into two separate Python scripts because I think we have an issue with context before. OK, perfect. It's done just the CSS file. Proceeding to the next script for weather card JS. Perfect. So that does require a little bit of problem solving to deal with these LLMs. But luckily, that's pretty much what I've dedicated in the past five months of my life to. So kind of know what to do. OK, so it's updated to two files. Oh, it wrote it to the wrong folder. We'll just replace the right folder and refresh, please. Moment of truth. There we go. We have it. It. Um, we have it styled. It actually looks kind of nice, these cards. So it could theoretically read and edit files too, but yeah, context limit is an issue. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a subscribe, a like, and a share, and a comment. The more, the merrier. I appreciate it so much. Shout out to all my recent subscribers. Please let me know what kind of content you want to see. I'm probably, probably going to continue making and editing stuff with AI agents. I find it super exciting. So thanks guys, thanks for joining the journey.